it's Debbie with Kip's Corner. Welcome back, and if you're a new subscriber, welcome. So in my last video, I talked about how I'm getting ready to start an Alice in Wonderland series. I'm making four journals using these fabric prints uh, that I found. So I'll use a few of them on the front, a few of them inside. Anyway, I have one. Not done. I don't have the corners on it or the knob or any of that, but I've got the basic, uh, the basic layout done and glued and ready to go. And I used a brown, a brown fabric on this one with a vintage doily, a frame. There's the print inside the frame. And then just some kind of a funky mix of laces and things and some cheesecloth over here. And then some little pieces of, um, from the center of a uh, die cut I have of playing cards. Got that. There. And another die cut piece. I'm not done. I do want to play with this a little more. I used a brown paint, uh, brown acrylic on the base and a rose gold um, metallic wax, or Gilder's wax. Um, but I want to put some more brown on here, I think. Anyway, I'm going to set this aside for now. I'm going to make the next one using this same idea with the frame and the print inside the frame. So, let's get started. Um, I have all of the all of the covers I'm using were, well, three of the four were Reader's Digest condensed books where the spines were either non-existent or cracked. Um, and so I pulled the spines off and replaced them. <laughs> Look at the inside of this is a mess. Replaced them with um, with a chipboard spine. So, and then I painted them. I went over this with a layer of white gesso. I did that because some of the colors were fairly strong colors on the, the, um, the cover. And the fabric I'm using is a thinner fabric. It's kind of a quilter's, you know, it's a cotton, so it's a pretty lightweight. You can kind of see, maybe, see my fingers through. It's pretty thin. Which brings me to the next step. Because this is so thin, um, that, that limits you really. This is the fabric I'm going to use on this one, which I love. Um, because this is so thin, clearly, no question about it, um, Fabri-Tac would bleed right through it and just make a mess. And so I experimented with this one. And what I did was I put, uh, let's see, Heat and Bond Light. I wasn't paying a whole lot of attention when I purchased the Heat and Bond. I probably would have gotten a medium or a heavy if I had been. <laughs> but... Um, but anyhow, um, a Teet and Bond light that I put on the back, and I've already got this on, so this is ready to go. As a matter of fact, I can go ahead and pull this off. This is just the protective paper. You can see, I think you can see the shine. You can see that Teet and Bond on there. Next, what I did, uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. The next thing I did is I started with the spine with my fabric tag. I'm just getting really low. I hope I have more. I do. Okay. I meant to pick some up and <clears throat> forgot. And just start putting some fabric tag on the spine. And I get a pretty good coverage. I'm going to go ahead and get in that crevice right there. Created from the spine. My and I've got over here off camera my little mini, mini iron. Um, the reason I'm not, I'm still using Fabri-Tac is because while the heat and bond I think is awesome stuff, I'm not sure I completely trust it yet, or trust it not yet at all, to really stick down and stay. All of this will be covered up on the inside, by the way, all that ugly. This particular one had a bunch of stickers on the inside of it. All right, and the next thing I'm going to do is take my little baby iron. So I've, I've put Fabri-Tac down, and I'm going to actually, before I take my baby iron, I'm going to 
run it. I want to sort of smush it, right? I want to get the, the bumps out of there. Get it as smooth as I can. It feels good. And I'm going to go ahead and iron it. Just going to kind of put some heat on it. And my theory, I don't know if this is true or not, is that the heat and bond kind of heats up and melts along with the Fabri-Tac. And the two together form a pretty good little bond. And that's pretty smooth. Could maybe smoosh it out one more time. Okay. And it doesn't bleed. So I think what the, what it what happens is the heat and bond sort of creates a um, barrier, if you will, for lack of a better word, it creates a barrier so that that it doesn't bleed. It doesn't bleed. No bleeding. I can't quite get that in. There we go. Let's dig that down in there. Okay, so once the spine's done, then I'll pull this back and get started on the rest of the cover. <laughs> I'm just smoothing this out with my bone folder. You don't have to have a bone folder. Um, I think that you could do this exact same thing with a an old uh, credit card or gift card. And then what I'm doing is I'm just kind of going back through and checking to make sure that it feels fairly smooth, you know, without a, a lot of great big thick bumps in underneath from the glue. And then I'm going to go ahead now and go pack over it with the iron. And this little baby iron doesn't get that hot. I mean, it gets hot enough to melt beeswax, but <laughs> that's, it gets hot enough, I think, to... I, I didn't iron the, the um, Wonder Under heat and, bond, heat and Bond. I didn't iron the Heat and Bond on with this iron. I used my regular my real iron, my adult iron, um, but there we go. I can feel that ridge where the tape was, but otherwise it's got a nice, uh, pretty smooth surface. Let's make sure we got this good here. Back through here one more time. There we go. And there's no bubbles. There's no spots where the glue didn't stick. I mean, it's just a nice, smooth, stick them down. All right, let's go to the next one. So it works. Um, the idea behind creating a seal to the fabric, which is what your heat and bond will do. Um, and even though this is heat and bond light, it does work. My glue is actually, um, I'm really gluing it down with the Fabri-Tac, but it's not bleeding and it's a thinner fabric. And it's staying pretty and straight and nice. That's exciting. Yay. So now, um, see if I use upholstery fabric a lot on covers. And for that, for upholstery fabric, you know, that's it tends to be thicker. And you don't really have to worry about the Fabri-Tac bleeding. Or at least I've never really had a problem. But in this lighter weight cotton, it's definitely going to bleed. So you've got to... Now I know some people will put their Fabri-Tac down and then sort of smooth it with their finger before they um, start gluing and that that is helpful too. I have done that as well. 
and have still gotten bleed in, through the through the fabric in a couple spots. So, um, probably because I didn't smooth it out enough, I'm guessing. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just trimming up the edges now, getting rid of a little bit of the excess, making sure that then now I still have that uh, heat and bond on these pieces. It was a little bit, I uh, cut the heat and bond a little smaller than the fabric. And so now I'm just cutting off that edge. Okay. Okay, now the beautiful <laughs> gross inside of this particular book. Let's do this. I'm gonna cut some, miter some edges. I'm gonna go just about an eighth of an inch, maybe 16th of an inch. It's about an eighth of an inch shy of the corner. Cut that off. And one more. That's all I do there. All right. Now I usually start with the long end. Uh, let's see, while I'm here, let me mark my front and my back. If I can find a pencil or a pen or a Sharpie would work. This is gonna be the front and this is the back. And again, all of this, all of this will be covered. All right, I'm gonna do the exact same thing here. I'm going to run my Fabri-Tac through first, and then I will use the iron. just love this fabric. I hope I have enough. Well, I know I do. I have enough to do another book. Um, I don't know what I've got. I've determined what my themes are going to be for the next three journals I do, or some of them I might do two of, but for the next three themes, um, I've started collecting things for after I get done with Alice, uh, the Alice's. All right, when you get to this short edge, what you want to do is you want to take your thumbs. Let me see, am I in camera? I'm sure I'm in camera. Take your thumbs and just kind of push in that corner just a little bit. And once you've got that pushed and squished, then you can go ahead with the rest of it. And that gives you a pretty decent corner. Same thing, phone folder. And heat. And I don't know, honestly, if the heat does anything at all, if I even need to do it. But I thought, well, I'm not going to hurt anything. I'm not burning my fabric. Um, if, it, if it keeps that heat and bond, it, it activates it and gives it that extra strength, then... Who am I to say not to do it, right? Okay. One more side, and we have this done. Again, I'm really not paying any attention as to whether or not I'm in frame. Okay.
So this guy is ready to start putting together. And as I put weight on this and get everything on the inside, this will this will give a little bit with time and, and close. But of course, it'll probably be chunky, so it'll probably be like that. Love that fabric. Okay, here's what else I got. This is the, the Alice print that's gonna go on the front. And this is the frame. So this was a Tim Holtz frame. And if you look at my last video where I was kind of walking through some of the supplies that I have, I actually had this frame in my hand. It was a kind of a greenish color. What I did was I used a modeling paste and two different stencils. I have this, um, I don't know what it's called, Argyle sort of stencil, and then a Flourish stencil. I used both of those with the modeling paste and then just threw some crackle paste in a couple just random spots throughout. Waited for that to completely dry and then went back through with white gesso and then this is just a blue acrylic paint. Uh, just a little cheap little, uh, they're on sale, 30 cent paints and it'll sit in there like that. I'll probably come up just a little bit so my Shashar cat is in the center and his head's there. And so that's what that'll look like, which is pretty. But this isn't done. So here's the fun part. And I mixed this paint. This is a blue, it was a lighter blue than this. And I added uh, some black to it so that I could get it about the same color as the flowers. Let me, um, let me unplug my iron here before I burn myself. Set it over here where it's not gonna burn the house down. Okay, um, so, and then I've got some things to play with here. This is a piece of die cut. So I'm just gonna play, I kinda like that. Maybe there's just two of them. I'm not gonna, I'm trying to do it different than that one though. That was my whole idea. I want this to be different. I don't know where, I don't have a whole lot of room here from a width perspective. Maybe that goes on top. Maybe I cut that one off. Let's start with that. Let's just, let's just start with that. I'm gonna cut this one off. So I have two full, whatever those are. I think that's the back. Uh, so let's start there. I'm kind of liking that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start building. This is easier to do if this is completely flat. With some stuff, just keeping Alice in sight here because I'm not putting it in the frame just yet. I want to build first. And I wanted to, to determine uh, right there, what I'm going to do. Okay, uh, we're, we're playing. I've got some of these. I've got, ooh, see. This is a, it's like a pocket watch with the rabbit on it. And the rabbit is not in this picture. It's Mad Hatter Alice and the Cheshire Cat. So if rabbit is on the outside, that would be good. I've also got this rabbit which could be fun, but then that's double rabbit, double whammy on the rabbit. Um, but do I like the idea of that maybe? And I would probably make, uh, color this sort of this darker, uh, a darker beige or light brown. And then I've got these flowers, which I love. Yeah, maybe there's one there and there's one here. Yeah, that's a possibility. Okay. Um, so pretty much what I'm gonna do is just keep playing until I get to a point where I think I like it. Uh, I'm also going to put wax on top. Maybe I should do that first. Ooh, here's a, this kind of goes with the key, right? That might be cool. Oh, I like that. 
I like that a lot. Okay, so let's leave him here. Again, I want that darker, but I might just use ink. Um, not sure about this. I think I liked the pocket watch better. The problem is I like the key on here somewhere. Well, let's take this off. Maybe the key just needs to be by himself, Mr. Key by himself. That I like, very simple, not a whole lot to it. That's not a bad thing. Um, what do these look like tucked underneath, perhaps? Can you tell what they are? I think this frame is wider than the other one. Yeah, it is. That's why, yeah. Oh yeah, about a quarter of an inch maybe. Okay, so that means maybe I don't have as much going on. Oh, I know what I do wanna to do too. I want this down the spine. How pretty is that? You know, I could put the cards down the spine too. Mm, um, maybe, 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 maybe. This could also go in the spine. Why do I think I, why, I'm, I'm really wanting to use this apparently. I'm trying really hard to use it. Um, man, I almost like the simplicity of that just as is. Okay, what do you think? All right, let's do this. First things first, let's get some wax on this guy because that's going to make, you see, look at, isn't that pretty? Yep, I like that. I tea dyed this and the funny thing is, is I, and I, uh, I dried it outside and where, and I, I didn't have the, the, the mat that it was sitting on was not long enough for it and so I folded it kind of like this. Let's see, how did I do that? However I did it, I ended up getting like three or four different <laughs> different colors. This is the front, and see it's got a very distinct, but then this back is darker. So I don't know, maybe I'll go with the light. I can either do the lighter one or the darker one. Again, not sure. I think I like the darker side. Yeah, I think I like the darker side with this fabric anyway. Okay, <laughs> play with that later. Yeah, it was funny. It was like, oh, well, that's two-tone. All right, let me move this out of the way, and let's put this guy front and center. And let me get here. This is the paper that I just had from the from the um Heat and Bond. I don't know why I want to call it Wonder I Wonder Under. Is Wonder Under a fabric just like Heat and Bond? Are they the same thing? I'm not even sure. All right. I'm gonna get some I'm gonna get some wax and I'll be right back. Okay, I grabbed my box of wax and I think uh, I keep I mean I can't decide. I can't decide if I want to do Bronze, this is Bronze Age, or Copper. Uh, I think this is gonna look gold-ish, but I have gold too. No decisions, decisions. I don't think I want it gold. No. I don't want it silver, although silver would be gorgeous on this. I don't think I would like the silver with all of the brown on on here, on this background, this tan color. So, all right, we're going to go with Bronze Age. We're going to go with Bronze Age. And this is um, Prima Marketing Finnebear. My own camera, there we go, Finnebear Bronze Age. This is an old, uh, an older one I've had forever. So this is an old label. The new labels look more like this. So my gold is a newer one. But most of my other ones are older. Just got it on my finger, and I'm just going to come through here and just very lightly 
brush across. Oh yeah, I like that. I think that was the wise choice. I'm not worried about getting any extra on the background. It's like I showed you with that uh, rose gold on the last one. Um, I'll go back over that. Likewise on this with some paint, some more paint just to kind of dry brush over it. I might dry brush over this particular one with a white gesso. We'll see. On the other one, I will go dry brush with um, with some brown paint. I just have to mix some up because I don't have brown. I have to make it. It's not hard to do. Oh, I do. Well, I, I have a uh, umber. So, yeah. And I'm going to keep doing this. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. And now what I'm doing is just taking some, I've got some white gesso here and a brush. And I'm dry brushing some white just to kind of tie all that together. I'm kind of hitting the ends here, the edges. I'm doing it at a slightly different, kind of at an angle. I don't know why, just because. But I think... That just tones down the blue just a little bit, makes it lightens up the frame. And then now I have to decide if there's anything else I want to do. Just kind of uh, gives it a worn, a little bit of a worn look, too. Just kind of hit these corners here. And I mean, <laughs> it takes just a tiny bit. Just a tiny bit. And I don't want to get too much on here, but if I get a spot where I think it's too heavy, I can kind of come back in and and uh, go over it with either more wax or more acrylic. There. I think that's good. And there we have it. Now I have to decide. Now let's just do a little tiny bit more. Maybe right here. There we go. Just subtle little, it's a subtle little something something. But it helps tie in, helps pull that so it looks less like just some um, colored wax on top of some acrylic. kind of gives it more of a, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but we're going to leave it. <laughs> we're going to leave it right like that. Right like that. I mean, I could, I could play with this all day. Maybe a little bit more right here. There's really not much on my brush anymore. A little bit more right here. Okay, stop. Stop. Now, I think, I don't know, and I may ruin it. I'm thinking about taking some of this patina wax and just putting an ever so slight bit And this is a different brand. This is um, Builder's Paste Wax is the brand. And I think I want just a tiny bit, just a tiny bit and a couple spots. Just again to give it a little bit more of a worn look. And I might not like this. I might do this and think it looks terrible. I mean, if that's the case, then I will go to plan B, <laughs> which would be to, Ooh, I do like that though. I'm gonna kind of hit some of these spots where I put a little bit of the white 
again, just to kind of give it, um, I want to warn, oops, might've got too much there. I'm going to go back over that spot. And I don't want a lot, but I just want a tiny bit. Just a tiny bit, maybe on these cracks might be a good spot for it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm liking that. Okay, now I'm going to go back over. And let's get this off my fingers. Just as just ever such a just a t slight touch of the patina. But I'm going to go back over a couple of these spots now with my bronze because there's a couple spots here that I think are a little heavy, like right here. See how that kind of tones that back down, brightens that back up again. Right here, got a little heavy here. Whoops, now I'm heavy with the bronze. <laughs> I could do this all night long, back and forth, back and forth. All right, let me show that to you up close and personal here. So you can kind of see we have some warnish looking edges. The blue is still coming through, I think. But once I get it down, just like I'm going to do with the pink or adding brown to this one, um, now that I've got it down, I'll mix some more brown and just come back over and, and I, I think I'll touch up some a few spots with some a little bit more brown. So I can that's easy enough to do after after it's um, stuck down because you're dry brushing, you're not really using. A whole lot of um, get this out of the way. You're not really using a whole whole lot. Oh, I think I like it. I think I do. Okay. Now, go back to. I was trying to determine, and I need to decide. I like that there, but I don't like that color. And I think I like this guy here. Uh, I don't know if I want him straight. He kind of fits, there's a little crevice right there that he fits in. Just the natural, not natural, but the ridges uh, that I've made with the texture paste. He kind of fits right in there like that. Okay, what color to make him? What color to make him? I've got some ink here. Mm. All right, let me come back here with this. And let's see what this looks like. If, oh, well, let's see what this looks like with some, this is a chalk ink. Uh, it's, it's Versa Magic chalk ink, and it is Jumbo Java. So, just going to ink this guy up and try to get it as even as possible. And I think the chalk has a nice look to it. Now let me get the edges. Am I on? <laughs> let me get the edges here. Oh, I do like that. It's got a nice, it's got a nice sheen to it. Oh, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Happy with that. There we go. So you can see. I think that totally works. Now, let's put some bronze. <laughs> let's put some bronze. Oh, excuse me for reaching ink on this one. Wax. Let's go around. I'm going to go around the edges. Try to just kind of hit, highlight the edges here. Actually, no, I'm just going to go over the whole thing. Just to give it that metal. And I think the bronze will kind of match a little bit better, maybe. Even though I really like this brown.
it'll look more real. Although it's not real. It's not going to look real no matter what I do. Okay. Let's see if that works. Uh, let's get some of this off of my finger. <laughs> Alright, let's see what we think about that. Yep. Okay. Now what I have to do decide is whether or not I want to keep him that color. If I keep him that color, let's slip this up underneath here and see what this looks like. If I keep him that color, that is also the color I would probably use on my book corners and that'll that'll tie that in a little bit better just have to decide if I like it or not or the other option is to paint him I could this is where decisions I could I could put him I could cover him with black gesso and then use a wax on top of him which might look really cool. And that's what I did here on this case. I didn't use black gesso. I used my brown ink and then I put wax on top. Oh, so decisions, decisions, right? Do I do that again? All right. Just put some, just, I'm almost out of black gesso. Time for more. Okay. We're going to paint him, paint him with black gesso. And when I do this, before I put him down, I will put a spray coat on top of him, um, a clear coat, a sealant. Let's see if I put my fingernail right there. Hopefully that'll do it. Oops. <laughs> or not. Because the, the wax that I'm going to put on top of this is very close to, I mean, he's more of a gold and I'm putting a bronze on, but I'm not worried about my coverage being awesome. Just worried about getting, here we go. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to sew, well, no, I'm not. Um... I, when I put this one together, I went, I ran a stitch around. I actually took the fabric piece and I put the fabric piece onto a cardstock and stitched it onto the cardstock and ran an edge around. I'm not going to do that this time because I don't, in this case, um, I, it, well, I don't, I don't need to. And I don't think that, that I could get this. I think it'll look funny if I have a straight edge across here because this has a slight arch to it. So I think, I think all I will do is, I'm going to trim this just a tiny bit. All I will do is glue this down onto the paper, uh, onto the cover. And then I will, this still has the paper backing on it, so I need to take the paper backing off. Let's make sure it's not going to bleed through. Let's just make sure it's not. No, it's not. Ta-da! Okay. Next up, I'm going to, and I will do this off camera, I'm just going to go ahead and glue everything down. You all don't need to be bored with that little bit of fun funness uh so i'm going to glue everything down and that's it it was a very simple project again i started with a frame from tim holtz i added modeling paste through two different stencils and just sort of blended them together used some crackle paste in a few spots painted the whole thing first a layer of white gesso and then a layer of acrylic paint and then I went over the top of that after it dried and uh, just rubbed some bronze wax on top. Then dry brushed a tiny bit of white 
then some patina wax at just some of these edges. Um, and then, of course, I went back over the spots where I got too heavy on the patina <laughs> with the bronze. Um, and then this is just a chipboard, a chipboard piece that I used ink on first, and then that bronze, that same bronze wax. And that'll go there. And these are just little, these are, I think, from Crafty Me Shop uh, is where these came from. It was a string. Um, it's a string of these little flowers. I did dye them, tea dyed them, and then you can just cut them apart. And so I've just cut a few of them apart. And that's that. And then my my key will kind of sit right like that. And I think that's it. That's all I'm going to do to the front of it. I'll have a knob on here before I glue any of this down. I'll put my hole in for my knob. And she'll be done. All right. Well, thank you for joining me. I really, really appreciate it. Next up will be, I still have two more covers to make, so this is just covers one and two. And so next up will be the next covers, and I'm going to do those completely different. There will not be a frame on those. I'm going to work on a chipboard piece, um, create some, I'm going to work on sort of a nice, i got to cut these down, but it's just a nice thick chipboard piece, um, as thick as the cover, if not thicker. I'll cut it. Um, for maybe half inch shorter all the way around and then I'll have that piece. I'll work on that piece completely with the mixed media. I've got a lot of a lot more fun stuff to use, you know, things like this that I haven't used yet. A lot of fun stuff to use. I'm going to create um, just a uh, mixed media panel that will go on the front. And on those two my fabric pieces I will use somewhere inside. I don't know where or how yet but uh, we'll have to think about that. <laughs> but, so on two of them, I'll have the fabric panels on the outside, and on two of them, I will have them on the inside. Yeah, that's where I am. So we're getting there, slowly but surely, um, inch by inch by inch. <laughs> Thank you again so much for joining me. Okay, just kidding, I'm back. I wanted to show you, after I got everything glued down, what it looked like. I added a couple of little brads here. Pardon my hands, they're a bit of a mess. Uh, a couple of little, little brads here where the, there were holes there, so it kind of made sense. Got this guy glued down. This is on here temporarily. I'll remove this um, as I put my inside papers on, but it is just uh, screwed in, and these are just sitting on here too. But I wanted to give you an idea of what that's going to look like when we get all of the bling on after the guts. So this is as far as I will go at this stage. And I ended up going with the lighter color on the um, lace because I liked it ultimately better with the pieces on the front. So that's that. Covers one, Pink Alice and Blue Alice are officially done. Uh, done as far as they're going to get done until I get ready to um, finish. I'll come back in and do more. The bling, the bling is the end. The bling is the last step that I do. So these are done as far as they're going to get done at this stage. Two more to do. And then uh, after I get done with those two covers, I will start playing with the guts. So that's it for now, for real. I'm not going to come back again, for real, for real. Uh, thank you so, so much for joining me. If you're a new subscriber, I really appreciate it. And if you're an old subscriber, I, I appreciate you too. Um, thank you so much for being here, and stay tuned for more. Bye.